We're back, but Hollywood, it is shut down. SAG-AFTRA, the union that represents nearly all actors, is officially on strike after contract talks broke down with major studios represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. We should note that Comcast, the corporation that owns our parent company, NBC Universal, is one of the entertainment companies represented by that alliance. Now, with the Writers Union also on strike, if you are planning to watch any new episodes of your favorite scripted shows this fall, think again. We're about to devolve into the Real Housewives of Paramus. Uh, Nancy, you are a member of yes. the Actors Union. You yeah. actually served on their national board for years. What I do you did. think about where we are? I feel like we're in a moment where greed seems to be the prevailing uh, thing right now. And as an actor and as a person who writes, I'm not in the Writers Guild, the thing that really strikes me is that people have a misconception that the actors that they see, the big movie stars and big TV stars, that everybody lives a life like that. There's a small group of actors that make a boatload of money. Many of us don't do that. And you need to make 26, or I think around $26,000 a year to qualify for health insurance. And with uh, the advent of streaming, that eliminated residuals, which is how a lot of actors are able to live when a, a show or a movie is first shot and then it replays on network television or on cable. You get a little money for that. You don't get it for streaming. And it's very hard to hear some of the big shots, Bob Iger talking about how actors aren't being reasonable or realistic, knowing that these are people that make tens of millions of dollars every year for so long and so many of us are struggling. Totally fair. But, and, and we could say, listen, CEOs make a boatload of money, but Bob Iger and these other guys are running companies in an industry that's not in crisis, but it is in steep decline. So how do you balance the two? Because when you talk about contract negotiations, this is about negotiations for future work in an industry that's in trouble. The industry is in trouble, declining. Bob Iger spoke to that over this, this week in terms of what they were seeing at ABC and the different networks, without question. But now you're talking about a group of people, to your point, they feel like they haven't kept up with the cost of mm -hmm. living. And it's not just Brad Pitt and, and Julia. Absolutely. And Julia, right? Who? Brad Pitt and who? Well, I was going to say <laughs> Julia Roberts. <Julia Roberts. laughs> it, it was coming. It was coming. <laughs> it's everybody else. It's the 80% of the people right. that are probably living paycheck to paycheck. That's so exactly they're dug right. in. And kudos to Fran Drescher, who is, I mean, she's playing hardball. And maybe that's the right person in the right spot. But this is going to last longer. And I think inevitably they're going to get what they want. AI is a component here. It's such an, an Explain important why, component. Explain why, because people don't realize that. This okay. part is really, really interesting. So, so uh, one of the contract negotiation moments supposedly was that the studios came together and said, okay, here's a, a groundbreaking AI uh, uh, assignment, you know, idea that we'll come up with, and here's what it is. You're a background actor. You make your living sitting in the background of the coffee shop that the two principal actors are in. We're going to pay you a day rate, a single day rate, to scan you in, and then that will be your likeness for, via AI for the rest of your career. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, SAG-AFTRA walked away from that idea. Yeah, but no more is, paycheck. No just more pay paycheck. Talking paycheck about no, no, for one day. Yeah, we're not talking about residual, residuals. Yeah. We're just saying for the rest of your life, you are a digital icon. And so I think it's important to remember, like, once upon a time, the Department of Defense used to have a bunch of Hollywood screenwriters on the payroll imagining future scenarios because they're so good at imagining the future and it turns out they are way out in front of this stuff. They can see what's coming, which is that AI is very quickly going to be able to grab your likeness, grab this and that. And I think it's also important to note that the Directors Guild of America just recently concluded their, they ratified their three-year agreement and specifically in there it says generative AI, things like ChatGPT and MidJourney are not allowed to do the work of directors. So they've actually won it. It seems like this, the, the writers and the actors are holding out for something similar. Evan, this is the first industry-wide shutdown we have seen in over 60 years. And when an industry shuts down, there are ancillary industries that get hurt, scores of people. What are your thoughts on all this? It's really sad. I mean, it's sad to see this happen and, and this to come up. But I am a little confused by some of this conversation because the Internet's not new, right? This has been coming for a long time. People cutting the cord on cable, that's not new. It's been coming for a long time. It feels like there was a decision made by some people who were in charge to shift this business to a world where they were going to attack Netflix, try to become Netflix, and now they all regret it, and they're asking everybody else to 
bear the burden of that decision that they made. That's, that's I mean, as a guy who just watches TV a lot, that's how it looks to me. And so I'm a little confused because, I mean, because of course all of these other people, you know, my, my uncle was a gaffer for years. I mean, I know how important it is for people to work regularly in this business, in this town, in LA, wherever. But I do feel like there's a broader question of like, where was anybody in charge of this stuff for the past, like, I don't know, 25 years? Uh, welcome to the world of short-termism. Yeah. yeah, so let's talk about, we started the show with Bidenomics and how well the economy's doing or not doing. So think about what we're talking about here with this strike. The chasm in this country between the have and the have-nots, the wealthy and the poor, has never been wider, and it continues mm -hmm. to widen out. Mm -hmm. That's this in a nutshell, if you think about it, and people are upset, rightly so. So you go back to Bidenomics, the economy seemingly is good for a lot of people. I would submit from 15 to 18 percent of our fellow uh, Americans. This is late 1920s, 1930s. They're deciding, do I feed my family or do I pay my electric bill? That's not a particularly good economy. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and the other thing that just to echo what you were saying about AI, AI also can cut voiceover actors in the same kind of way. Okay. Words and phrases are being taped and cut and pasted so that instead of you getting you know, money for a job that you would do, and then residuals, one paycheck in perpetuity. And I think the unions have tried to stay ahead of technology, but technology has changed so quickly that there were a lot of things that couldn't really be pre-negotiated because how would you know what was going to happen? In a way, it feels like the, the, this, this conflict that we are seeing is, for me, like the, the very cutting edge of a conflict that all these industries are going to do, in which people are very clearly seeing my job is under threat from technology, it's about to be wiped out, and all of this money that we had at one point is shrinking down, but it's not being distributed evenly across Thank this you. group. I really feel like we are going to see this played out in, you know, trucking, in pilots, in all kinds of journalism. areas that take on journalism, we've seen it, yeah. right? We don't, nobody cares about that, but yes, <laughs> but yes, but that's right. And as, as a result, I think we're really seeing a preview of a much bigger picture to come. Wow, do you agree with that? I do. He's 100% right. And this is just microcosm for a swath of industries that people feel left behind. That's right. People feel like they haven't kept up with inflation, although inflation is coming down. And they say, wait a second, you know, we see... Everybody's salaries out there. We see what Bob Iger makes. We see what these people That's make. That's what's so difficult. Why? I don't want to wanna make their money, but no. I can't be making one one hundredth. I mean, the there has to be some. The difference between worker the pay and CEO pay, the differential has never been greater yes. than it's it is gross. right now. Stephanie, it's gross. And we're the people, you know, the workers are the ones that make that wealth. So we're not asking to make Bob Iger money or, you know, Elon Musk money or Speak anything like that. Okay, I'm sorry, Evan. <laughs> I I Evan needs that happen, money. Right? He's got a that. child, I know. But, <laughs> You know, just put make us part of the puzzle for Pete's sake. And the, and the backstop of the system has always been a basic fundamental need in any industry for human beings to do the work, and that guaranteed some distribution of money. Right. AI is really the beginning of a world oh, in which we may not need that in huge swaths of the economy. And so we're seeing, I think, this play out sort of in advance.